preventive and interceptive orthodontics. What's the difference between these two? In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly that. I'll also provide a complete list, a guide of which malocclusions you should treat and at what specific age. Take advantage of being here, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel because that helps YouTube recognize us as quality content and helps this video reach more doctors. What is the difference between preventive orthodontics and interceptive orthodontics? So I brought here a definition that would be a more classic one, and then I'll explain it to you. Preventive orthodontics means performing non-mechanical procedures with the goal of maintaining the normal development of occlusion and preventing the establishment of a malocclusion. So this means that before the age of five, these facts come from the American Association of Orthodontists. We are going to provide family counseling. We are going to help with information related to breastfeeding, which greatly helps prevent the patient from developing certain types of malocclusions by stimulating the maxillofacial complex. Also, hygiene and habits. So we are going to help eliminate habits by offering alternatives. There is also the preventive aspect of health, such as dental restorations, monitoring of occlusion, and the eruption of primary teeth. Additionally, space maintenance. If there is a loss of a primary tooth, I can place space maintainers, whether functional or non-functional, and normalize breathing and speech functions. By referring a patient to a multidisciplinary team, speech therapist, a language therapist, and we also need to have a trusted physician, specifically an otolaryngologist, to manage respiratory issues before the age of five. The question is, do I place appliances before the age of five? And the answer is no. Or in other words, I shouldn't place them. Even if there is a malocclusion, the one that drives parents the most crazy, which is anterior crossbite. But the thing is, there isn't strong evidence that treating before the age of five is better than treating after the age of five. By that age, they understand better. They've already gone through certain developmental and learning processes related to speech, independence, and a better understanding of the treatment because orthodontic treatment shouldn't be something the patient suffers through, they should participate. So every time I try to start treatment too early, this can negatively affect other functions in the child. That's why the American Association of Orthodontists does not recommend mechanical appliance before the age of five. So that's what preventive orthodontics is about. Preventive orthodontics does not mean that the child will reach permanent dentition without developing any malocclusion. So we will do our best in terms of raising awareness so that the impact is as minimal as possible, but it is in interceptive orthodontics where we will begin mechanical treatments. Definition put the definition on the screen. So these are orthodontic and orthopedic mechanotherapies applied in the early stages of occlusal development with the purpose of preventing the progression of malocclusions and, if possible, correcting them, as well as avoiding or eliminating the establishment of harmful oral habits. So that's what we have as the definition of interceptive orthodontics, which is to intercept. I see a problem. I treat the problem. I remove the problem. And I don't need to keep treating this patient for the rest of my life. No, I can treat it. I correct the posterior crossbite. I correct the anterior open bite. I correct the class three. And then I step out of the picture. I am going to monitor this malocclusion. I always say that interceptive orthodontics involves a process, which is treat, wait, treat, Wait, treat, wait. 
we are going to intercept and evaluate whether proper maxillofacial development has been restored. If that went well, okay, I just continue with monitoring. But if I observe that a new problem has arisen or there is still something that needs to be improved, then I go back and do a second intervention. But in general, interceptive orthodontics mainly works with appliances that are efficient. In other words, achieving the best possible result in the shortest possible time so that the child doesn't spend their whole life wearing appliances, that is not interceptive orthodontics. In fact, my team and I wrote a very interesting book chapter about early treatment. It's in this book here, Orthodontics from Their Perspective. Below, I will leave a link for you to join the Telegram study group, and there I will share the full chapter of the book we wrote about early treatment. Because in the book, you will see that there is a table. You can see the patient's first appointment with the doctor, then the diagnosis of the malocclusion. And here we have, let's talk about which malocclusions are the most important when it comes to early treatment. I have two possible steps, preventive orthodontics and interceptive orthodontics. Before age five, non-mechanical procedures. After age five, mechanical procedures. For those who stay until the end, I'll leave the link so you can access this full chapter of the book. Before we get into the main malocclusions, I'm going to give you a guide to which malocclusions are the most important to treat with interceptive orthodontics. I want to make it clear that treating malocclusion is not just a luxury. I'm bringing here a news story from a newspaper about a boy who committed after his parents were warned that he was being bullied, but the parents did nothing and the bullying was because of his teeth and his glasses. And after a while, they say the boy was attacked, that he got into fights several times, and the school had contacted the parents about the bullying 20 times. The parents did nothing and he went through the tragic episode of taking his own life. So you see, interceptive orthodontics is not a luxury, it's a necessity. In one of the videos, I talked here about how prevalent it is. We have minimum prevalence rates from 56% up to 85% of children with some type of malocclusion. And we know that we can greatly improve children's quality of life if we follow a good interceptive orthodontics protocol. So don't let our children die, or even worse, die psychologically, suffering from. With these problems, let's address this. This is a public health issue. What we're doing here is a global public health matter. So. What should we do once I know that malocclusion should be treated starting at age five? What would be the guideline for identifying the most important malocclusions to treat? There are three malocclusions that are the most important to treat early. The first malocclusion is posterior crossbite. Posterior crossbite does not self-correct. It only gets worse over time. The second malocclusion would be anterior open bite. It's very predictable and quick to treat in mixed dentition. And the third malocclusion that should be treated is class 3. What matters most is the facial diagnosis. If this patient already shows any kind of straighter profile or a more prominent chin or the lower lip is ahead of the upper lip, regardless of whether they have dental class 3 or anterior crossbite, we already start treatment because we treat the face first, then the teeth. Even if this child doesn't have a dental class 3, you might say, Professor, that's crazy. You're going to do a treatment that's not addressing the face, and the teeth will end up in class 2. If I do a class 3 treatment on a patient who is actually class I, the teeth will end up in the correct position in class 2. It's true, but the mandible takes some time to show its proper growth. So the child will grow when he's 20 or 21 years old, 
you no longer have the opportunity to do interceptive orthodontics. That's why we treat patients starting at age five. If the patient already has a family history or profile characteristics that indicate he is a CAS-3 patient, even if he doesn't have this dental CAS-3, we still treat him. So to sum up, early on we are going to treat anterior open bite, posterior cross bite, and class three dental or facial. We even have other problems that we can treat later on. So one of the additional problems we treat are eruptive disturbances. So I always have to keep my eyes to see if the central incisor is coming in a good position, if the first molar is coming in a good position, if the canines are coming in a good position. There are also other problems that I can treat. Space maintenance and space regaining are a responsibility. If a child loses a tooth, what do I do? Do I just sit and wait for the space to close? Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. No, I'm going to place a space maintainer. And if I've already lost that time, I'll use a space regainer. That's super important. Other problems we treat are anterior diastemas. During the ugly duckling stage, these diastemas are very common and normal, but there are children who don't like them and get bullied because of it. If it becomes a psychological battle, or if the tongue is pushing into those spaces, we're also going to treat it. And also, what else can we treat? Pattern two, class two, Pattern 2 can also be treated a bit later on, as well as deep bites in these children. There are cases that we treat with appliances and others with monitoring. So from there, I create individualized treatment protocols for each malocclusion. There are also other conditions that we currently treat, such as obstructive sleep apnea, which is the difficulty of breathing during the night. We address these treatments together with physicians as well as joint problems, also the interception of oral habits, which is also our responsibility from the age of five. At the end of this video, in the description, I'll leave a link to our Telegram study group. This study group already has a lot of scientific articles. There are already more than 5,000 people in the group, it's quite large. In this study group, I'm also going to release this book chapter we wrote for you as supplementary reading. Okay. Also, my dears, you might be wondering, why does Professor Ray produce so much content on interceptive orthodontics? Because many years ago, I began to study this field with passion. I dedicated many years to these studies, to research, and after some time, I created the Intercept course, our online course in preventive and interceptive orthodontics. It has thousands of graduates worldwide. Enrollment isn't open, but if you'd like to receive information before anyone else, I'll leave a link so you can add your name to the waiting list. It was a pleasure to be with you today. A kiss from your teacher, and bye-bye.